Wow, look at all the stuff in this library. How will you find what you want? Think. The books are grouped in ways that help you. For example, I am trying to find general information about birds. In a library, I would walk over the section about animals and then take a peek on the shelf. Take a look. On what shelf would you have better luck finding a book about birds? That's right, the bookshelf on the left. Believe it or not, this is the same way scientists classify living things. In this video, you'll learn how scientists classify living things, what the five kingdoms are, how scientists divide the kingdoms up, and how ideas about classifying organisms can change. People usually group things by how they are alike and different. Grouping things makes them easier to find and shows relationship. Librarians group books by the way their subject matter is related. You group living things whenever you call them plants or animals. You group animals when you call them birds, fish, or mammals. Scientists classify or group organisms by their similarities. When you classify something, you're arranging it in a group using a system. Scientists group many organisms by body structure. For example, insects have six legs, birds have two legs, and are covered with feathers. However, scientists don't usually group organisms only by their appearance. Scientists also classify organisms by their cell structure, how they get nutrients and energy, and how they reproduce. First things first, there has to be a large group of classifications. The largest group into which scientists classify living things is called a kingdom. There are five kingdoms. There are the Monarian, Protist, Fungus, Plant, and Animal kingdoms. Organisms in the same kingdom share more traits with each other than they do any organism in any other kingdom. You know that bacteria are tiny one-celled organisms. Bacteria make up the Monarian kingdom. They're the smallest, simplest living things. You could find them almost anywhere on Earth, in the ocean, in the snow at the top of the mountains, on bare rocks, and inside your body. Some Monarans use energy from the sun or from chemical reactions to make sugar. Others get nutrients from the bodies of other organisms. The Monarans show here are simple cells with no separate nucleus. The material scattered through the cytoplasm does the job of the nucleus. This Monarin is known as Legionella pneumonia, which is better known as Legionnaire's disease. This disease doesn't spread from person to person. Instead, the bacteria spreads from breathing in mist from water that contains bacteria. If you were to get this bacteria inside of you, you'll experience the same symptoms of a flu, and if left untreated, it could be fatal. Protists make up another kingdom. Most protists are one-celled organisms, like an amoeba, but some have many cells. Some protists have a green pigment, like the one in the chloroplast of plants. Like plants, they trap the sun's energy and produce sugar. Other protists, such as the paramecium, get nutrients by absorbing them from surroundings or by capturing and consuming prey. Have you ever eaten a mushroom? If so, you've been in close contact with a fungus. A fungus is a member of the fungus kingdom. Fungi are mostly many-celled organisms that can't move around. The fungi in this picture gets nutrients by sending root-like structures into the tree they are growing on. You've probably seen or heard of other several kinds of fungi. This includes molds, mildew, and yeast. Fungi all get nutrients by absorbing them from living organisms or from organisms that are dead or decaying. Plants are many-celled organisms. You already know that their cells have cell walls to give them support and structure. Most plant cells have chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll, the green pigment that traps the sun's energy to make sugar. This process is called photosynthesis. Pictured here is moss. Moss usually grows in clumps in damp, shady places. When viewed through a microscope, the cells can be easily seen as well as a chloroplast. Like plants and fungi, animal cells don't have a cell wall or chloroplast. That being said, the next kingdom we're going to look at is the animal kingdom. Animals cannot trap sunlight or produce sugars. Animals get energy by consuming other animals or their remains. Animals range in sizes from a tiny fruit fly to a whale that measures 30 meters long. So, 
If kingdom is a large group, scientists have to divide species into a smaller group. All the organisms within each kingdom are similar to each other in some ways. However, kingdoms are so large that they include very different organisms. Scientists divide the organisms in a kingdom into smaller groups. The chart shows how one organism, the lion, is classified. Look at the first row on the chart. All the organisms pictured in the row, including the lion, are animals. Find the animals in the second row. They all, including the lion, have backbones. Notice that the fly isn't pictured in the second row. It doesn't have a backbone. As the groups got smaller, the animals in the group are more alike. Lions and tigers are in the same genus, a group of similar organisms. The animals in this group are all large cats that roar. Next comes species, a group of organisms of only one kind that can interbreed in nature. Now find the smallest group, the species, in the bottom row of the chart. The species has only one kind of animal in it. The lion is the only kind of animal in its species. Organisms in the same genus are closely related. About 250 years ago, Carolus Linnaeus, a Swedish biologist, developed a way to name organisms and show relationships. He gave each kind of organism a two-word name. One word was the name scientists use for the organism's genius. The other was the name they use for its species. Scientists still name organisms this way. You might know some scientific names. For example, Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-rex for short, is a dinosaur that lived millions of years ago. It is in a genus scientists named Tyrannosaurus. One kind of dinosaur in the genus makes up the species Rex. The lion scientific name is Panthera leo. Recall that its close relative, the tiger, is in the same genus. The tiger's species name is Tigris. Its scientific name, Panthera tigris, tells you it is similar to lions and other animals in the genus Panthera. This scientific naming helps to avoid confusion. Scientists classify organisms based on what they know about them. When they learn more about organisms and their structure, they also learn more about how the organisms are related to other living things. Then the scientists might change their ideas about classifying organisms. For hundreds of years, all living things were classified as either plants or animals. Then in the 1600s, microscopes were developed. Through the microscopes, scientists saw tiny organisms no one had ever seen before. When more powerful microscopes were developed, scientists learned more about the organisms. By the 1970s, most scientists agreed that the tiny organisms didn't fit with either plants or animals. They put the organisms into a new kingdom, the protists. As scientists learned more about the cells of organisms, they added kingdoms for fungi and monarins. Today, many scientists suggest putting some of the monarins into a sixth kingdom. These bacteria have a different cell structure than any other bacteria. They don't use the sun as a source of energy. They use the energy from chemicals and plants, like volcanic vents, deep in the ocean.